What are we if not voyagers on an infinite journey of discovery? Navigating unfamiliar terrains without fear, but with curiosity and purpose. Here we are, behold our power and beauty. Cosmic beings in eternal bliss. Everything that is and everything that once was. Burdened with glorious light that is often ignored. We dance in the celestial void. That in-between place where the edge of the sun kisses the horizon. Have you seen us? You might find yourself asking, who am I? When you find yourself alone in a crowded room, misunderstood and underrepresented, know that you are not alone. You are part of a constellation of beings burning bright with beauty and creativity. We are bound by cosmic forces that exude ancestral energy. We are more than the unseen. We are part of a living and breathing force of community. Think about that the next time you say who am I? Somewhere in that in-between place, can you see us? We are guided by ancestral spirits, showing us the way to the unknown. Shall we dance together in the infinite cosmos? Let us rejoice in our endeavour to reach that part of our souls, yearning to be unleashed. That part that sings the songs of the universe in our hearts. That part that is a powerful fraction of our ancestral lineage, giving us access to so much. All we have to do is look with our heart's eye. Hello and welcome to this podcast from the Royal College of Art, home to the next generation of creatives and the world's number one art and design university, representing the largest concentration of postgraduate artists and designers on the planet. I'm your host, Benji Jeffrey, and you've just been listening to a poem written by RCA Visual Communication alumna Talia Duguru. Talia is an artist whose practice dismantles Eurocentric perspectives on African history through word and image. The poem she was reading was commissioned by RCA Black, the RCA's Association of Black Students, Alumni and Friends. It is part of Black Star, a project creating a time capsule of artworks from the RCA BLK community to be sent into outer space. Talia's poem captures the importance and power of community and the vital support that a sense of connection, both to peers, but also to those who have gone before, can offer black artists and designers. On the RCA podcast, we bring you insights into the philosophy behind the programs and the teaching and learning, which takes place at the college, by talking to staff, students, and the wider RCA community about what we do here. Today, that conversation is all about the RCA's black community, past, present, and future. For this episode of the podcast, I spoke to two individuals who support and foster a sense of connection and community here at the RCA, Akua McMorris and Emily Moore. Akua is an interdisciplinary artist and researcher who graduated from an MA in photography at the college in 2009. Subsequently, she curated the 2011 RCA Black Exhibition in her role as the Student Union President, and she is currently a tutor on the Graduate Diploma in Art and Design here at the RCA supporting the next generation of artists and designers at the college. Emily is a visual artist who graduated from an MA in painting at the RCA in 2020. She is co-chair of RCA Black, a recent initiative that encourages and supports contemporary visual artists who identify as Black within the RCA's wider community. They have established scholarships, provided mentoring and organised networking events, exhibitions and socials, with the goal of making incremental changes within the RCA to positively impact the experience of students from the African diaspora. Emily, Akua and I spoke about the 2011 RCA Black Exhibition, which showcased the work of past black students from throughout the history of the college. We also discussed the current RCA Black Association 
how it came about and the importance of having a network of support and solidarity. The music you have been listening to during this introduction is from a track by Andrew Pierre Hart, an RCA painting graduate. It's taken from a mix he created to accompany his exhibition, The Listening Suite 3, Lagos. Akira and Emily, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. How are you both doing? Yeah. Good. Yeah, good. All right, let's get straight into it. Um, so Akua, could you tell us a bit about the 2011 RCA Black Exhibition and how it came to be? In 2010, I became the Student Union President. Uh, I took over from Jack Tan, um, who was president in 2009 to 2010. And we got approached by the African and African Caribbean design diaspora to do a project. And we thought, actually, let's do something about the black students of the RCA, current and alumni, which required a lot of research. Mm -hmm. And it was really great, actually, because at the time, there weren't so many black students at the RCA. It was quite few. And I remember when I was a student, people would come up to me and say, oh, I know who you are, you know, and I'd be like, everyone knew who I was. but I didn't know who anyone was because it was just me. I mean, I wasn't the only black student, but I was the only one with no hair. So right. I was a skinhead at the time. Or a barled, as my mum would say. And or a what, sorry? A barled. What does that mean? That just means skinhead? <laughs> yeah. Nice, love it. Um, yeah, and so we just felt, myself and Cordelia, who was the vice president, felt that it would be really important to do something to recognise the contribution of black students, past and present, to the RCA. And uh, alongside the African Diaspora Design Initiative, we worked together to dig up as many students from the past and hold an exhibition. How did you manage to find these students then? Where were they where Through were you digging? registry, actually. Okay. And so it was really going to the back catalogue yeah. and seeing what they had and names and finding out who would be willing to send their work in. Yeah. And we found one of the first black students at the RCA, a man called Barrington Watson from Jamaica, okay. who I think studied in 67. Wow. He passed away a few years ago now, but um, he was really excited to be part of the exhibition. Um, but yeah, we it required a lot of help and support from registry and... Um, the administration to sort of find the names of who was who because it wasn't really categorized back right. then whether if they were black or not so then we had to do background research wow on some of the names so how did what did you say his name was barrington so, watson barrington watson how did he because it's quite an interesting thing to sort of be the beginning yeah of a lineage yeah. like how did he feel about what had come he was since? really excited and actually really generous he sent us a painting from jamaica he lives in jamaica we didn't actually get to speak with him Mm -hmm. But he was really keen and excited to have his work mm -hmm. in the exhibition. But he remembered his time at the RCA really fondly, from what I can remember. Yeah. Um, I was trying to find emails from back then. <laughs> They're long gone. Yeah. Um, just that correspondence between ourselves mm -hmm. and those who contributed to the exhibition. And how many people were there in the exhibition? I think we had 22 in total. Uh -huh. um, I was, again, also looking for the catalogue that we made. Well, the catalogue does exist. It's in the archive. It's in the archive. I was going to bring I've one with it. me here today and I was looking for it. But yeah, we moved house and it's in boxes and we haven't unpacked them right. yet, uh, three years ago. Yeah, I think there was about 22 students in total, right. alumni and current. Amazing. Yeah. And was that from across different programs? Was it because it was it mostly arts and humanities or was it? It was from design. Uh -huh. We had students from jewelry, uh, sculpture, wow, photography. No, no one from research. No, no writers. Right. Um, unfortunately, we had Frank Bolin. Uh -huh. He sent. He there's a painting that the RCA owned, so we loaned a re one of his huge pieces of work. Wow. To put in the exhibition. Joy Gregory, uh -huh. uh, Charlie Allen, who's a um, a tailor, menswear uh -huh. designer, Faisal Abdullah, who's a photographer and hair and a barber. Right. Yeah. Nice. And like Frank Bowling, of course, is really important to to this discussion. But maybe we'll come on to him a bit more later on. But Emily, were you aware of the the exhibition before you came, or has the 
has so, been talked about. Yeah, so I wasn't aware of it before I came, but since I think since we're doing the RCA Black work, we've myself and Akua have had conversations about extending that exhibition and what that could look like today. Mm. So yeah, I think it was a powerful exhibition at the time and really potent to you know the conversations that were happening at the RCA. Yeah. And are still happening mm. today. At yeah. The RCA. And was that was there was it at all influential on the on the naming? Was there something to do with that kind of lineage that came came into naming the association? I think there's there's a differentiation between RCA Black as in the exhibition because uh-huh. that is spelled B L A C K. Yeah. Whereas the association is B L K, which is a bit of a wordplay, but also it, I think. I mean, as I said, I wasn't aware of the exhibition before, like, you know, doing the work of RCA Black. Mm -hmm. However, I'm sure like there, you know, that pathology and that legacy of what you guys were doing at that time is really implemented and and left the doors open to what we're able to do now, you know, Mm. as a as an organization. Um, So, yeah. And can you tell us a bit more about RCA B? We'll call it RCA BLK for the, for the context of this uh, this conversation. But can you tell us a bit more about how that started? Um, yeah, so RCA Black, there was a, a number of initiatives that came up before RCA Black. Um, some of them I've been become more aware of since, like doing the work of RCA Black, such as the POC Link Up, mm-hmm. um, which is the people of color. Mm-hmm. It sounds like the people of colour <laughs> <laughs> link up. Um, but yeah, um, but, you know, the RCA, RCA Black came about in 2020, really. Um, it started off with a conversation between myself and another graduate at the time, Roxanne Simone from Jewelry and Metal. And it actually happened on Zoom because, you know, there was no interaction. We didn't we weren't actually able to physically meet each other. And it just happened in passing that we were walking I was walking, going to the bus stop from Battersea and she was walking in one direction and we both realised that we went to the RCA and we'd never met uh-huh. on campus before. Um, and we were like, hey, hey, you know, that kind of, I see you, sister, yeah. you see me, sister. <laughs> yeah. And from there we exchanged details and we never actually got to have a conversation till till the COVID because that was just before that hit of COVID came right. um, in March. And we had a conversation online about, you know, just about what it means to be a student here. You know, some of the things that we faced, some of the things that we wouldn't want anyone else to face. And then through that conversation, there was an introduction to Halimo from RCA um, Student Union. Yeah. And we started, again, kind of regrouping and having a conversation about, you know, what is needed. It was all off the back of the um, BLM that was happening across the world. Um, and we really realised how much we all needed a support network. Mm-hmm. So really and truly, the RCA Black started off as, as a support network for each other. We were meeting on Zoom. It started growing. You know, there was conversations. It was like drop it, almost like a drop-in session, a constant like drop-in sessions for, you know, potential students, new students, alumni. It was a really an exciting time because there was so much creativity and, and people were making, obviously, from their house. And, mm. you know, there was so much uncertainty that it just gave like almost like a, a boost in this energy of like robust creativity that people just wanted to just do stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I can't, yeah, yeah. Not on your own either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, all over the world, because there was people who were like, you know, weren't just based in London anymore because they went back to the respective places and they were, we were just talking like, what do we need? What do we want? And, you know, and so RCA Black really came from a movement of people who just wanted to just see change. Mm. And and needed each other, right? Yeah, and needed yeah. each other. And we created manifesto. There was a manifesto about, you know, supporting students through scholarships, which now we know is the Frank Boland scholarships, mm-hmm. but that all came off the back of, you know, people just having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really something that we need to be reminded of in in a space like this, like how, you know, the importance of just communicating Mm. um, and listening to each other. Yeah, I think the the conversations that happen outside of the the curriculum quite often can be the most important ones in terms of the the growth when you're when you're a student right mm-hmm. um how do you find that because you're teaching on the graduate diploma so i guess across 2020 when all this was happening you were in a slightly different position to emily how was that for you um it's just wonderful to know that that was 
happening in those moments because those feelings of isolation can feel quite immense mm. particularly at a time when covid really did isolate people yeah but as a a black student you can sometimes feel like you're the only one in a space um i know it's different now i walk around um kensington in particular and i see lots of other black students and it's quite oh that's wonderful you mm. know because that wasn't the case when i was a student here yeah. um, and that's not that long ago Mm. in the scheme of things so there's a lot of change at the at grad dip it's yeah it's really great it's nice to be on the other side and see it and not feel overwhelmed by the studentship of it all of mm -hmm. feeling like you're the only one mm. also because of the great team that I work with you know we're really diverse which I think is is amazing and I, I've never worked in a within a department of people who come from all over the world, you know, yeah. so that's a real privilege. But I'm also able to see how maybe some of our other students who join Grad Dip, um, our black students are growing, mm. but there's been moments when there's just one and I know I can empathize with them, you know, mm. and also not just myself, myself and Nathan Francois Carl can, you know, help point students in the right direction and towards RCA Black. Yeah. Where there's a real network. It's it's a supportive network, which is mm. really great. And I guess one of the great things about uh, particularly your role, Emily, is that, you know, there, there are staff members like you, Akua, but you're very much uh, in one part of the mm. institution. Uh, and with students, they, they come through and they leave and, you know, kind of uh, initiatives come and they yeah. disappear and they ebb and flow. But to have this consistency, uh, how have you found that, Emily, knowing that you are the, the consistency, I guess? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not the consistency. I think we have to remember that this is a community regardless I think one one of the things that you know while setting up RCA Black it was definitely about building legacy mm. it was about you know celebrating a legacy that for the great people that have come through the RCA previous to us mm. and those who are with us now but those who will also come after us you know so for me I'm just a conduit of this space at yeah. the moment and I'm sure there's going to be someone else that comes in and they take over and and they're able to to bring a new energy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that facilitator is important. Don't diminish yourself, Emily. You're doing plenty. And thinking about those that have, have come before and, and are, are going to come, there's a, a new initiative, a new residency just started. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so the Yinka Shonabari Foundation um, is an amazing, amazing foundation that's set up by Yinka Shonabari. He's mm -hmm. an artist, Nigerian artist based in the UK. Um, and he has a residency program in Lagos, Nigeria. Right. Um, and it's been running for, I think, for at least now two years. Um, and so it's been a great, you know, to be able to partnership with them and really to have those conversations, those needed conversations, you know, across continents for our students and for our wider RCA Black community as well, because the residency program is, you know, targeted at both alumni um, who are artists, but also there's a research element to it as well. Right. So and that's that, that's open to our tutors you know our research fellows our phd i mean yeah phd but i think that's that's exactly you know the kind of things that i say black are, are looking to initiate moving yeah. forward yeah great and what 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 else is on the horizon because i know there's also been um there was quite a lot of members of us the rca black community who were showing at freeze right as part of um i'm gonna get the numbers wrong one one, one five four. One five four. Sorry, yes. I knew it was a combination number. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing, the great thing about you know being an artist and a practitioner, there isn't one set time. Like you know, your work is in in situ or it is, is being ignited by the audience that it is in faced with. And so you know, you've got alumni who studied at the RCA, Lebain Humid, who's like next to um, Jade Fatumi, you know, or someone who's just graduated now, like Shaquille White. And I feel like that dialogue and that conversation is exactly, you know, the exciting things that both us as as practitioners can witness, but also the audience and those who are interested in being in the arts can go and see like what this looks like. But no, there's uh, lots of great um, shows and events. I mean, there's one of our recent graduates from the curatorial department, Jarrell, and he's just opened up his own gallery, wow. you know, and the first show he's had was one of his peers mm -hmm. from the contemporary art practice. 
you know, that's a solo show. And that also coincided with Freeze and 154. So you've got all of these great like pockets and nuggets of gold just popping up all over, mm. you know, and this is, you know, in true nature to what RCA Black means yeah. as, a, as an organisation. You're really seeing the flourishing of, of different um different communities nice yeah and how does that how have you kind of seen this growing as well Akua like it must be quite amazing to see what you maybe wish you'd had when you were a student emerging oh absolutely um it's funny I was thinking about when you were speaking about now and the present time um I was at a talk a few years ago at the um black cultural archives Mm -hmm. and I was with the Black Artist Collective, like women from the 80s. I'm probably saying the title wrong, but women from the 80s who started, you know, really making a platform for black artists. No, Lebena Humid, yeah. Ma- Marlene Smith. Marlene, Marlene Cla- Smith was there, Cla- thank Claudette you. Claudette Johnson. Yeah. All of these, we have to, we have to say these have names to, to, start, I'm really to celebrate. Bad at I love names. how good your roller dance yeah. is I'm as not, well. Like, it's all in there. <laughs> thank you. Um, and how... They were really happy to see RCA Black Exhibition coming from the space and time that they came from. Mm. And then to see it grow, I mean, I know it's two different things, but to see these opportunities made available to current students and alumni is brilliant. Mm. Yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. And it allows you to dream a little bit more, to think, okay, things are... It might not be necessarily getting easier all the time, but they're changing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we've got, is it, are we in the second year of the Frank Bowling Scholarship or is it the first year of the Frank Bowling or the third year? So as the, as a name, name Frank Bowling Scholarships, we're in the second year. Okay. But as in the name of, as in the scholarships as a whole, yes. it's the, probably about the third year because it was originally called the, I think the Black Student Scholarships, got it. which was what? you know, we were instrumental in making sure that that, that yeah. lived. And do you feel like you're seeing you're, you're seeing the changes that those scholarships have put in place? You're seeing more kind of black bodies? We're seeing it in grad dip, on yeah. the graduate diploma. We, we've got, the reason why our black students, have the number of black students that we have has grown is also because of the scholarship, which is mm-hmm. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a, a great, it's been a great initiative. And I think, I hope that RCA, you know, listens to this and keeps it on <laughs> keeps it, you know lets to. it ro- lets it roll on yeah um but you know there's there's something about leaving the door open mm. for people to be able to make work in the space that you know just allows them to dream as you just mentioned mm. Akua. and i think you know these scholarships have been that for a lot of people mm. you know it takes away the pressures it reminds people that you know they're visible you know, we celebrate you. Mm. We know that you're talented. And, you know, all of these kind of ticks that, you know, that pat on the back that not everybody, you, you, we kind of, you know, not everyone gets. Yeah. yeah. Well, it made me think also, like you just saying that now, um, I remember when I got the acceptance letter mm-hmm. for the RCA. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's still the same. It was this big A4 envelope came through the letterbox and I was like all right they're not going to send me that to tell me I didn't get in (laughs) so my heart started beating straight away Mm -hmm. and instead of feeling immensely confident in myself my confidence evaporated because I was like who who do I think I am that I can go to the Royal College of Art and also what space is there for me and actually I think now that there are the Frank Bolin scholarship is available mm-hmm. and that there are more mm. black students more black students will think yeah I can go there and there is a space for me yeah. um, because I seem you've had all of these other spaces you know? yeah I hadn't even thought about it in that context as well like yeah knowing that there is several yeah. <laughs> of a scholarship going out like yeah so that's only just like kind of made sense in my head yeah that's amazing isn't it absolutely yeah because I know if I was a student applying for the RCA now I wouldn't be able to afford it Right. And I would have to go for, I would probably have to try and see if I could get a scholarship. Mm. And the fact that that exists opens, it just, it really is a breath of fresh air, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a release that, okay, there's an opportunity, there's a possibility. Mm. But also circling back to what you were saying about the kind of imposter, I don't think you said it in these words, but the imposter syndrome kind of yeah. thing. And another thing is uh, with, with the RCA Black Association is that you have like drop-in sessions as well, right? So that people can come and talk to you, which is another kind of, 
comfort knowing mm-hmm. that that sort of service is available? Yeah, I mean, we have drop-in sessions. We had a brilliant session last um, December at the Freeze, Freeze uh-huh. um, Cork Street, where we had like a a session where students, we had food and drink and music. And it was just like, everyone walked into the space and was like, this is RCA. <laughs> I, I'm like, yes, this is RCA. No, no, you know what I mean? Like, and I think, you know, just reminding people, you know, what that space looks like mm-hmm. is also very important, yeah. you know, because I mean, Akua mentioned earlier on about, you know, when she was here, there wasn't a lot of black students. I was here in 2020 and it was the same. Yeah. You know, the reasons why these scholarships are so important, because I know what it's like to work hard, mm. yeah. <laughs> like have how many jobs, also be juggling family life and be like pinching a little food from mum and dad, you know, to yeah. survive. You know, And that's a real, it's that's real. A, yeah, that's real life, yeah. you yeah. know. And so leaving that door open for someone else not to have that struggle is you know, it's a blessing to be able to be in this position, but it's also something that should just have come so much more naturally right. to to the space. Sure, yeah. Mm. And so the fact that you have drop-in sessions where you can, uh, I always feel like it's like where you can take your coat off. You don't mm. have to carry this extra layer mm. of whatever is bothering you or whatever mm. it is that you're dealing with. Yeah. To have a drop-in session where you can do that have someone to go and speak to. Mm. Yeah. I mean, they're great because it means that it's not just, it means that other people get to meet people as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just to kind of thinking beyond the institution, how do you feel like the, the wider landscape is for students, like black students leaving university and going out into the art world, design world, architecture world? Like, I know, for example, the Architecture Biennale this year was was the positioning Africa as the laboratory of the future. I might have gotten that slightly wrong, but, you know, do you feel like it's a, maybe a more welcoming place than back in 2011? Mm, um, oh, that's, that's a hard one. I think there's been lots of changes. Mm-hmm. And I think there's been lots of positive changes and particularly with the unfortunate murder of George Floyd and uh, Black Lives Matter. What came out of that? There's been some positive steps to really acknowledge and uh, promote black initiatives, Mm -hmm. whether it's black films, whether it's black um, art and discussions. Um, So I, I don't know. I think one's attitude should always be that I can do this. Right. And no one should say that you can't. Yeah. Um, and to have that belief that you can and actually and if someone's saying you can't mm. to try and find a way so I think always um, that that sort of energy of being I'm, I'm going to do this and I have a right to it yeah it's yeah. necessary so uh, yeah I think it's very positive in many ways yeah what about yeah. you Emily um that's some of the work that RCA Black are, are trying to help to support I mean it's great having all of these scholarships but I do think that there should be you know, industry support, professional support and development for students who don't, who haven't come from that background or who Mm -hmm. are new to this. So, you know, it's slowly growing, but, you know, if there's anyone listening, anyone out there. (laughs) (laughs) Get in touch. Yeah, get in touch. But to be honest with you, we've been working with some great alumni. Yeah. You know, outside. The RCA Black, the great thing about RCA Black and um, Student Alumni Association and Friends is that there's so many people who are willing to support the efforts of RCA Black and to mm. see people really shining and rising. Yeah. You know, Studio Thrift, who graduated from RCA Black, um, Thrift Kerr has been supporting us in our branding. You know, when you think about that, you know, and those relationships we're helping to foster and what that looks like for the next generation, I think, yeah. Right. Um, so I just wondered if either of you had any advice uh, for anyone that wanted to kind of... Uh, think about kind of postgraduate study who perhaps is someone who is black and feels like they, you know, don't quite know the roots in or what the sport's going to be like. Are there, is there anything beyond what you've spoken about that you would advise someone to, to do or seek? I think in this space, yes, we're supporting black students, but I think it's also about if you have it, if, if you have that urge, if your heart is pulling you towards like, curating and making and you want that outlet and you want to be in in a community like this you know if you want to be here no matter who you are Mm -hmm. what age you are where your background is where you where you live in the world come 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, reach out. Yeah. You know, come and see an open day. Send send an email. Send that email. Mm-hmm. You know, speak to someone who's already studied here. Yeah. And get the ball rolling. Yeah. I think like Emily said, you know, if you have that urge and that pull, I, I wouldn't let fear rule you. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah, do yeah. it. Definitely. Um, preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. And if you're in the right space, headspace, and you feel ready, you have to jump. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just do it. See, and it will open. You know, you, you have to take that risk. Yeah. Yeah. But then also be aware that there are people that will give you comfort. Yes. When you arrive here as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. We're here for you. Yes. It's a lot. It's a lot to get in there. Thank yeah, you. It is. Was there anything else either of you wanted to share before we thank you. finish up? I just thank want, you. Yeah. But I just want to thank all of those who have been a part of this journey. Uh-huh. You know, there's been so many voices, so many people, so many, you know, people who have put their foot and their heart and their soul into making this space available for everyone. And I'm sorry if I haven't named you all, but um, I send you lots of love and well wishes. Thank you both for joining uh, me today. It's been a fantastic conversation. Um, You've been listening to the Royal College of Art podcast, home to the next generation of artists, innovators and entrepreneurs and the world's number one art and design university. You can learn more about our programmes at rca.ac.uk, as well as finding news and events relating to the college and our application portal if you're a prospective student.